Hard Boys, a psychodrama for radio. Produced by Blue Trumpet for Radio 2 R 88.5 FM, Sydney, Australia. Episode 1, Forthwith. Scene 1, Runaway. your shout. What do you mean? We only just got here. It's your shout anyway. Do I look like a soft touch, do I? And get him to put on something decent. <laughs> Wasn't Neil young enough for you? That was then, this is now. You're a glutton. Hey, this place is good. They've got this huge record collection from the 70s. You can play whatever you like. I told you so. What you put on this shit for? Just wrote tell dinosaurs. I happen to like it. Mate, what if I join you? Yeah, be our guest. Mate, the real music was back in the 70s. Billy Thorpe. And I'm talking, I'm talking real Australian music. Yeah, well, it's got to be better than Jethro Tull. Yeah, him and Lobby Lloyd. Kevin Borich. Raised tattoo. They were tops. Yeah, mind me beer will over slash. Yeah, that's better. That's real music for you. Yeah, well, I suppose Thorpey had his moments. Had his moments? Man, I saw him in the cross in 69. Ripper, he was safe and loud. I mean, fucking loud. And that was before I went travelling. Travelling? Where'd you go? Mate, I've travelled the length and breadth of this country. I've done more travelling than you've had on dinners. I've travelled so much it isn't funny. Mate, no one round here's got a mortgage on travelling. I've travelled all through Southeast Asia, all through America, all through Europe. I've travelled. Yeah, yeah, but have you seen the real Australia? Returned to service and gone to this guy's place on you. Henry Alfred Parks the Third, he called himself. His family were rich, from Brisbane. He was about twenty years of age, and his parents had cut him off, with the exception of the flat. They'd kicked him in the ass, and turfed him out in the world, and he couldn't handle it. And he was having a rough time, young Henry. I could never put my finger on Henry. He'd be passive one minute, and spun out the next. He'd go into his washing, and the washing machine wouldn't work. And so he'd abuse the washing machine, and build it up he did. And his paranoia stretched to the point where if a, if a car pulled up outside, he'd, he'd jump up and he'd peer out the drapes, look at the number plate, and say, Christ, it's a bloody government car. Look, it's official. Jesus, they're here. And then when I got up and looked, it'd be some guy from next door or, or there'd be nobody at all. And the other thing about turning out lights in the evening, because he didn't like shadows, he'd jump up and scream abuse, he did, and then he'd sit down again and spill more coffee. I'd look at him and say, Well, you need putting down bad. Okay. Are you? Then Jay turns up on the scene. And he stays with us too. It's a typical Aussie morning on a typical Aussie day. Fucking Joe. He's a runaway kid from Sydney. And he had a lot of troubles. So I was about 23 at the time. 
and he was about 16. And of course he was paranoid of the coppers. They had an APB out after him, and that kind of bullshit, you know. And Joe's very timid. He's about five foot eight, greasy black hair, skinny, dark complexion, like a wog. <laughs> I mean, they met a throne descent, of course. Simple fact was, the family had kicked him out. He got so scared he ran, and he ran all the way to surface. And that's where he met me. He was up shit straight. He had absolutely fucking nothing. But he saw leadership in me because I was older. <laughs> Jesus. I was got out of the army. And I knew everything about leadership because I'd been living with men for years. I had recommendations for NCA training. And we're gonna have to wake up sometime That everything is not okay <laughs> In any case, we just sort of scum money and bludged it. Joe had been with us for a while, and it was near on starvation in the place. I was going to move on, and I didn't want this guy to come with me. I prefer to travel alone. So I said, listen here, Henry, I'm off. I'm going north. I've already come from the south, so I thought, why not go north? I had a mate in Gladstone, and I was hoping to meet up with him. So I said, I'm leaving tomorrow morning. So up jumps Joe. Hey, hey, Johnny. Can I go with you, mate? Nah, you can't go with me, man. No way in the fucking world. Hey, look, I'm going north myself, Johnny. Uh, I want to work in the meatworks in Townsville. Yeah, come on, man. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Like, Cross, you know nothing. Listen, I know the meatworks in Townsville. You haven't been there. And you got the jacks looking for you, and I don't need that kind of shit. And how the fuck you got this far, I haven't got a clue. You got nothing going for you, man, and you can't go with me. You go your own way. You go somewhere else and make a name for yourself. Oh, come on, Johnny, you can take him. Look, you guys can't stay here. I'm going to give up the place in two weeks. You've got nowhere to stay. Don't worry about me, Henry Alfred Parks III. I'm going. I'm taking this squirt with me. And I don't need that kind of bullshit. I'm walking out that fucking door, and fuck you, Henry. You're nothing but a piece of shit, man. Oh, come on, Johnny. Like Jesus, I put you up, man. Have a go. You can do it. Have a go. We can do it. This is in the lounge room. There's hardly a stick of furniture in there. There's two single lounge chairs, carpet, and a TV. And that's all there is to it. And this is the afternoon before. You know? Ended up taking him anyway, for two reasons. One, because uh, he was a lot younger than I, and the guy had no idea in the world. Two, because he was going to wind up in trouble anyway. In any case, he wanted to come. He yelled at me and I said, Joe, I'm going to tell you, you don't keep up with me, man. Like if I get a car by myself, I'm going to leave you for dead. There's no two ways about that, son. Your history, you're gone. Okay? You don't keep up with me, man. You're gone. Because I'm used to thinking by myself all the time. They're thinking totally singular. And then up jumps young Joe. So, i got to become plural. The difference was that I was late 22 and he was just 16. I suppose I related with him to the point that I was toothed out at home at 15 as well. I was thrown out in the night. Bloody cold and wet it was. I slept in a grassy field for two nights. I had nowhere to go. And I knew nothing. And I didn't know any family that I could turn to. And that's exactly the way Jay felt. He was feeling totally deranged. So at four in the morning, we take off. And I remember Joe stuffing a plate of cornflakes down his throat. And we're on our way.
victor of consciousness. Relaxed in mind. A feeling of mastery. Lust. Positive thought. To be a soldier of fortune. To carve one's mark on the face of the earth. In a lost world of pain and lust. To navigate a blind course on a winter's night. Calling to a shadow to save me from loneliness. Come tell my friend of loneliness. Cry your love like wind across a dry plain. You know that life's not worth a moment's waiting. Set forth across golden plains. Witness the drama unfold. Waste no time in following the sun. To be the sun of life. To have it burning within. To be a flame on the blackened horizon. Burning at night. You have been listening to Hard Boys, a psychodrama for radio. Produced by Blue Trumpet for Radio 2 Triple R. Written and directed by James Ben. Original story and poetry by Greg Young. With special thanks to Johnny Boxer in the title role. For information about Hard Boys, a psychodrama for radio, visit www.hardboys.com. <laughs>